Sometimes we don't realize the impacts that one individual can have. No matter who you are or where you live, anyone can make a difference in making this a better, cleaner, and more just world. I've now lived in New York City for seven months and I keep hearing people say, New York City is a dirty city, why is it so dirty? And it is, New York City is a big city and there's a lot of people crammed in a small space. There's just under nine million people here and unfortunately New Yorkers generate a lot of trash. But what gets me every time is that when people say that this is a dirty city, they don't realize that they can change that. In my time here, I've met some incredible people who have taken it upon themselves to make this a cleaner city, whether alone or by bringing their community together. I met up with a man named David Cass, who decided to beautify his neighborhood of Chelsea by taking over empty tree beds and putting in plants. I also met up with a nonprofit called the Clean Bushwick Initiative, who were fed up with the trash in their neighborhoods and just decided to clean it up. And they've been hosting weekly cleanups since 2016. And there's a lot more people like them, but I wanted to share their story to hopefully inspire you and show you that anyone can make a difference and that it just starts by starting. Well, my name is David and I live here in New York and in Chelsea and when I first moved into this area, I just noticed that there were these tree pits that were nothing more than trash pits. Uh, and it really upset me and I kept thinking somebody was going to do something about it. And uh, I actually like to garden and I just kind of one day said, if nobody's going to do anything, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. And the results were pretty transformative. When you see something going from garbage to a garden, it kind of made it all worthwhile. And, and people who walk by seem to be appreciative of it too. Now it's a, a bit of a task and I have to find time in between my real job to find time to actually garden, maintain them, pick out the trash, uh, and just keep them looking okay. Uh, right now I have 22. I don't know if I want to adopt anymore. There are some that I ride by all the time and I say, oh my God, they, they need they need somebody to adopt them. When I first started, people asked me if I had permission to do it, and I just kind of said, I don't know. And the most common question is, do you work for the city? And, and I say, no, I just live around here. I don't think I went to school thinking one day that people are going to come to me and ask me for gardening advice on how to garden these micro patches of dirt in Manhattan. Now that it's established, there are different comments because people now recognize me. A lot of people just come and thank me, especially this year during the pandemic. I started in March and as the pandemic hit and everybody was locked up, I decided to plant cold weather pansies and people were really grateful, you know. They'd come over and we were all masked and they just say, oh, we really need that, thank you so much. It was pretty heartwarming. There was something very normal about seeing flowers or very uplifting about seeing things continuing on because everything else had come to a halt. You know, it felt like everything stopped and then here somebody was out there gardening as if there was nothing wrong. All it takes is just one person. Every person is significant. Even though it's a big city with nine million people, it's a city of neighborhoods and those neighborhoods have blocks and then you know, you just shrink it down and it really comes down to the fact that people can make a difference, you know, even in this vast concrete jungle with millions of people walking around. Did it because it was something that I hated to see. Nobody said, hey David, clean this up. Nobody said that to me. It's bags full of trash, bottles, cigarette butts. And they just blow in there or they're tossed in there. It's the stuff that you see in the corner that for some reason somebody didn't have the wherewithal to carry it to the corner to throw it out. And if nobody else is going to do it, I might as well. <laughs> That's really what it came down to. I'm here in Bushwick for the reveal of Jason Naylor's Keep Bushwick Litter Free and we're about to do a cleanup with the Clean Bushwick Initiative. There's a lot of people here so it's really exciting because Evidently, Bushwick is becoming a lot more dirty. The Clean Bushwick Initiative is doing an amazing job at organizing weekly cleanups, getting the community together, and about to join them for a cleanup here in Bushwick. Hey, I'm Jason Naylor, and I am a Bushwick-based artist. 
I live right over here and I work all around here. So I'm excited to be here to talk about this mural, which I completed recently for the Clean Bushwick Initiative. This neighborhood is pretty cool because it's, it has so much diversity, so much art, there's so much color and like life, and there's also a lot of litter. And my role here is to bring some color to the project. That's what I do, is I put color and I put messaging and I put like my magic into my work, which goes on the streets. The art is a little bit secondary to the message, and that's the kind of work that I like to do. It's, you know, someone's walking down the street and they see something, maybe it's colorful so it like catches their eye, but then they see it and they read it, and if what they read actually resonates with them, then it may move them to, to do something or to change or to feel differently or whatever. So in a way, the message is king, and this message, keep Bushwick litter free, is so direct and to the point. two to three times a month we gather um, volunteers together to clean the neighborhood and in neighborhoods you know lower income neighborhoods and we have a lot of low income families here in Bushwick. Funding is everything. We're already left behind in a lot of ways with a lot of services and so this I don't think people realize like the impact that the pollution issues can have on especially neighborhoods like this one. Our group's been around for about four years. The main purpose of the group Initially it was to clean litter off the streets, plain and simple. That was the main goal. But as the years have gone on, the group's evolved into more sustainability issues and just community issues at large. There's a lot of issues in this community. I believe they're all tied together with the litter issue, actually, um, and health and well-being. At the end of the day, we're in crazy times. It's a pandemic, and the last thing we want to do is have a dirty city during a time that disease is being spread throughout our country, so that's why we're here and we hope that you know we'll influence other communities to also get involved on a, in politics, get involved with the city budget and also get involved with getting the community out and actually physically cleaning, because now we need it. Now is the time for it. I think that we've raised awareness and I think we've made relationships that I think give us the potential to create change. One of the great things is that we, we get a lot of people asking um, about starting their own groups, so I'm currently helping four different people start clean up groups in their neighborhoods, and that is really exciting to me. So yes, New York City is a dirty city, but if you want that to change, it's just as simple as by picking up a piece of trash or attending a cleanup in your neighborhoods. And there's so many cool organizations here in New York City, like the Clean Bushwick Initiative, who are hosting cleanups. So I highly encourage you to attend them, and if you can, just pick up a piece of trash.